I wanted to tell you about another piece of research that we've done. Uh, recently, we did some research about how audiences are affected by news about food and nutrition. I don't know if you know The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. If you don't know that show, I bet you know Studicia Notizia, which has often been compared to The Daily Show. Jon Stewart hosted The Daily Show for over 16 years. All that time, he insisted that The Daily Show is fake news. But I think of it as real news delivered through entertainment, through satire. Imagine a news story about food. Would it make a difference whether you encounter that story in traditional news or in satire? Would it make a difference to the information you learn from that story? Would it make a difference to how you feel about the story? Would it affect your behavior differently? That's what we wanted to know. So we recruited 1,600 people to help us do an experiment. We randomly divided them into four groups. One group saw a story about food on The Daily Show. Here is part of what they saw. As many of us know, the typical American diet is rich in <laughs> essential poisons. As evidence mounts that Big Agra and the food lobby have turned our food supply into an addictive, fattening death menu of artificial chemicals, antibiotics, and Cool Ranch carcinogens. <laughs> the question is, now that we have this knowledge, now that the American people are aware of this, what are food companies going to do about it? Little Caesars created the new bacon-wrapped deep, deep dish pizza topped with pepperoni and bacon and wrapped in over three and a half feet of bacon. It, it appears they're going to say, F you anyway. <laughs> While some establishments are giving our obesity crisis a chubby middle finger, others are more conflicted about their role. Here's McDonald's in January. All vegetarians, foodies, and gastronauts kindly avert your eyes. You can't get juiciness like this from soy or quinoa. This is not Greek yogurt, nor will that ever be kale. But then in March, McDonald's does this. McDonald's trying to offer healthier fare to its customers. And last week, the executives announced that U.S. restaurants will stop selling chicken raised with antibiotics over the next two years. Chicken without antibiotics? Well, now I'm conflicted. I want healthier food, but I, I'll miss treating my ear infections with the Buffalo Ranch <laughs> McChicken. So the web company wants the positive PR of going healthy, but doesn't want the hassle of actually improving the product. Well, there's a solution for them, too. We do want to move now to a new Kids Eat Right label that will soon be appearing on Kraft Singles from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Why? Here's how you know Kraft has not changed their ingredients. Kraft is still not legally allowed to call this product cheese. <laughs> how, you might wonder, did Kraft Singles manage to wrangle a Kids Eat Right label? The Academy has a program called Kids Eat Right. They entered into an agreement with Kraft, where Kraft is helping support this. They're giving money to the Academy to support this program. In exchange, they get to put this label on, on their product. So Kraft is paying the Academy... That sounds reasonable. <laughs> Turns out the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is an academy in the same way this is cheese. Yep. So, another group saw the same information, but in traditional TV news, no satire. A third group saw the same information, but in a typical newspaper story, no satire. The fourth group was the control. We didn't show them any stories. Then we asked all 1,600 people to answer some questions, to find out what, whether there were differences in what they learned, in what their attitudes were, and in whether they intended to change their behavior. We're still analyzing the data. In absolute terms, some of these that I'm going to describe are small differences. But when you consider that up to two million people watch The Daily Show, even small changes can translate into a major impact. 
Here are some highlights of what we found so far. We asked everyone, how did Kraft Singles get the Kids Eat Right label? The answer, of course, is that Kraft gave money to support the Kids Eat Right program. About one-third of the people in the control group got it right. Remember, they saw nothing, so either they guessed correctly or they already knew the answer. People who read the print story and people who saw the regular news, about two-thirds of them got it right but almost 80% of the Daily Show viewers got it right. What about attitudes? In particular, what about cynicism? We wanted to know how cynical people were about the food industry. Here's what we found. People who saw the Daily Show were more cynical about the food industry than people who saw other news stories or saw nothing. But here's something interesting about that cynicism. We asked people if they agreed with statements like, there's very little we as a society can do to fight back against food industry practices we oppose. Or, it's hopeless to try to change the food industry. They're just too powerful. What we found was that cynicism did not necessarily lead to feeling helpless or hopeless. People who saw The Daily Show may have been more cynical, but for some of them, The Daily Show video made them feel more optimistic about changing the food industry. Maybe cynicism can be a good thing. It can even inspire you to change what you're cynical about. One month later, we wanted to see if the kind of food news that people saw correlated with any changes in what they ate. Here's what we found. A month later, people who saw The Daily Show or the TV news were eating fruits and vegetables more often than people who saw the newspaper story. So, people who saw satirical news remembered more information about the food industry, became more cynical about the food industry, in some cases felt less hopeless about the potential for change in the food industry, and a month later, they were eating more fruits and vegetables. You can find out more about all of this on our website.